I debate socialists all the time, and their only real comeback is, oh, that's not real socialism, or that's not real yeah. communism. Is there any way to really get around that and try to make them see that, look, just because your version of socialism, that magical fantasy land version of socialism, has not been tried, doesn't mean that socialism is an acceptable concept. Yes. So the problem is that you're arguing with them in terms of the effectiveness of socialism. So what th that argument is you say socialism doesn't work, it fails everywhere, makes people poor and miserable, right? That's the argument. And then they go, but that's because it hasn't been properly tried. Tried, right? That's their comeback. Here's, so here is the actual argument that works with socialism. It is immoral to steal from people even if you vote to steal from people. Okay, if there are three people in a room, and it's me, and I have 100 bucks, and you and your friend are in the room, and you vote to beat me up and take my money, that does not make it morally legitimate for you to beat me up and take my money. One of, the great, one of the great lies that's been told about socialism, and you see this all the time, is people say socialism, beautiful idea in theory, but it doesn't work in practice. No, socialism is a shitty idea in theory, and it's an immoral idea in practice. Okay? The, uh, socialism violates at least three of the basic Ten Commandments, for those who still care. It makes government into God. It suggests that you can steal from people if you vote for it. And it says that it is good to be covetous of your neighbor's ass. Right, for Bill Clinton, it has a different meaning. But <laughs> the problem for conservatives is we never actually argue on a moral level. We're constantly arguing on an effective level, on an efficiency level. And that's a problem because the left always argues on the moral level. In the end, they always say, sure, my ideas don't work, but they're fair. They're fair, right? And so what you have to say, the only way to come back to that from that is to say, no, your ideas are not fair. Your ideas are theft. Your ideas are theft. You don't get to steal from other people just because you want their stuff. That's the only way to beat that argument, do it on the moral level. Otherwise, they can always argue, well, it's not perfect, it's not perfect. Okay, there's no way to come back from that because, again, they're operating in unicorn land with gumdrop rainbows and fairy skies. The, the thing I hate the most from the right is this constant refrain, yeah, socialism, it's a great idea if only it were. It's not true. It's an unbelievably morally shitty idea. The, basic, the reason is this. The basic premise of socialism is, I'm here, I'm breathing, give me crap. <laughs> right? I, I have an, you have an obligation to care for me. I have a right to health care. I can force that doctor to go to medical school, expend $200,000, spend her entire life learning medicine, and then I can walk into her house and force her to provide me medicine. Right? Capitalism, by nature, is the opposite. Capitalism is the idea that I will starve unless I give you a good or a service that you want. Right? If I don't give you something that you want, I'm not going to eat tonight. It's forced altruism, effectively. Right? We have to have a trade. We have to come to some sort of consensus. I have to give you something cool, and you have to give me something cool. Right? It's great. Socialism is rape, and capitalism is consensual sex. The reality of the situation is that the economy grows because people engage in consensual transactions, and people invent new things in order to engage in more of those consensual transactions. That's not an impoverishing thing. The truth is that socialism is the most selfish philosophy on planet Earth because it is based on the, the essential concept that I am breathing, therefore I deserve. Capitalism is, in essence, forced altruism because if I don't give you something that you want, then I will starve. If I don't give you something that you want, then I will starve because it is based on consent, whereas socialism is based inherently on force. Um, I think as kind of a, a millennial conservative, constitutional conservative, one of the biggest threats and one of the hardest things to respond to from people on the left is when they talk about the utopia of the Nordic countries because they are oftentimes armed with a lot of facts in regards to the efficiency of the public programs and things to that effect. So how would you recommend responding to those claims of, of the utopianism of, of the Nordic countries? Okay, so the first thing that's important to notice about the Nordic countries is that the Nordic countries are by and large extraordinarily ethnically homogenous. So they're not comparable uh, in terms of the, in terms of, and culturally homogenous as well. Uh, so Vermont looks a lot like Norway. Right, Bernie Sanders' philosophy works in Vermont and it works in Norway, but it only works for a temporary period of time because Vermont doesn't have its own defense budget and really neither does Norway, right? We've been paying for the Nordic countries' defense budgets for a long time. Also, it's worthwhile noting that the taxes in these countries are extraordinarily high and the countries are going bankrupt anyway. So for about a 15-year period, 20-year period, the Nordic countries have been experiencing extraordinarily slow growth, which has led them to actually elect more right-wing governments on economics and deregulate their economies because it turns out people don't like paying twice the amount that it costs for a normal car. Right? The, the, the income tax rate in, in places like Denmark for middle-class people, not for upper-class people, for middle-class people is like 60%. So, you know, it's easy for, for students to say 60% sounds good, but you all go to Yale, which means that eventually you'll have a job that pays you enough that you'll be paying a high percentage of your income in taxes and it ain't that much fun. 
There's a reason that Denmark, all these countries are now turning away from this, and uh, they've been living off the back of America paying for their defense budget for a very long time. So you have the privilege of, of not having to pay your own defense budget. You also have uh, a group of what can best be described as middle uh, of upper education people who have grown up in Western countries with a particular set of values, and socialism, in, at least in the, in the Nordic way, not, not full government ownership of resources, but, but high redistribution of income, you know, that is, is capable of lasting for a certain period of time, but even there it collapses. Right, the lack of my $100,000 salary, that's because society is mean, and so we have to transform the society. And, the, and that's why young people, again, 40% back speech codes in American life. This is why I think the last poll was nearing or over 40% of young people are okay with socialism, like the actual socialism, because they don't know anything. They've been taught stupidity. And how they feel is all that matters. I mean, there's a, there's a video that's going around the internet getting all sorts of play about income inequality. Income inequality is the stupidest issue. Income inequality means nothing, right? I mean, I'm, I have a lot of income inequality with Bill Gates, but I'm doing pretty well, and I don't care that Bill Gates is doing really well. The only thing we should all care about is that there are poor people. We should figure out how poor people can do better, not how to make Bill Gates less rich. But, what, but th this video is going around and saying, Here's a poll of what Americans think the wealth distribution should look like, and here is what the wealth distribution actually looks like. And I watched this video in bewilderment, and young people love it. And I'm, I, I watched this video in bewilderment saying, who told you that you get to tell the universe how wealth is distributed? Right? Who told you that you have a moral say as to how wealth is distributed? It's immoral, it's evil, it's wrong. You're going to have to steal people's labor from them. But people are not told this, and so they think that their own subjective vision of what reality should look like should govern what reality actually looks like, and it's only later, after 80 years of communist failure, that they realize, oh, that, and, and hundreds of millions of people dead, that they realize, oh, that was a bad idea.